what the gospel gave us most is this opportunity to be curious about our behavior. Wow, I love that word, curious. And um, you know, to ask the questions of why am I angry, not just to stop being angry, mm-hmm. but to be curious about our behavior. Welcome to the Gary Wilkerson Podcast. Glad you're with us. Today we have Sam Jolman. He's in the studio with us. Sam, thanks for coming in. Uh, I'm so excited to have you here today. Thank you for having me. I'm super excited. Uh, take a few minutes just to tell us a little bit about yourself, if you don't mind, uh, your upbringing, your education, and the career that God has you in right now. Yeah. So I'm a therapist, a counselor, and I got into this, um, you know, I, maybe like a lot of therapists, I went to therapy when I was 19, and it uh transform my life. I might mm. even say save my life. I was in a depression at the time. Mm. And um, I felt like uh, my therapist did magic. I, I didn't know what yeah. happened when I got in the room and suddenly my heart showed up. Yeah. Um, and so just even being introduced to the fact that I had a heart mm. and um, getting my tears back is what mm. it felt like being able to enter my story and know my own pain. I expected it to be a lot of advice um, and it wasn't that it was him yeah. listening and, um, and that was incredibly healing. Yeah. So wow. <clears throat> that led me to want to dream with God of like, oh, if I could only do that for a living, um, and offer that to others, I would love to. So wow. here I am. And you have your own practice here and yep, I have my own practice Springs. here and yeah. I've been doing that for 16 years and yeah. I want to do it till I'm 95. Cool. Is the plan. 95. That's, that, 95. that's the target date. <laughs> yes. Cool. Yeah. Strangely enough, uh, my wife and I are we're we're hoping for ninety three, okay, uh, because that would be twenty fifty, and uh, uh, this feels like a good year to, that's to right. check out. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so anyway, uh, but uh, yeah. So, uh, do you mind talking a little bit about that nineteen year old? Yeah. The, the when you say you're you didn't know you had a heart or you got your heart back, what was like? Did did your heart die? Did it, did you never know you had life and vibrancy and calling or? Yeah, I just, I didn't know there was the life of the heart. You know, I I grew up in a Christian home and I guess I would say it felt like um, God really wanted behavior, you know, like to do right things. And, um, but I didn't know there was this life of the heart. And, um, and I I wouldn't say that I had quite lost heart, but certainly had, as I said, like a pretty significant despair with entering adult life as a 19 year old. And, um, coping with my pain and knowing I had pain and how I was uh, medicating that. When, when, when the, the, the therapist you were meeting with, when uh, he or she, or he, 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 when he was bringing your heart alive, what was he doing? First and foremost, he listened um, and he cared. Wow. And um, not profound rocket science, but just a <laughs> genuine sense that he cared yeah. for my life. And again, I thought that... Um, Going to counseling, um, which is what my mom had recommended I do as a 19-year-old. I was in college, um, and I expected it to be a lot of advice giving, like I said, you know, or here's some behaviors to do or change. And um, he didn't do that, and it was startling. Um, He sat and listened. Yeah. Well, that's profound. So to see not only your heart coming alive, but that transition from behavioralism, um, a moral law, legalistic yes. following after God to to do that. You know, so I think that's – I don't see the, how there could be a way of somebody, you know, uh, in, in a therapeutic s- setting that's secular, that doesn't know Christ, how that, how that heart could fully come alive. I, I know there's some yeah. advances and there's some uh, things that you could learn and, and uh, some aha moments and you go like, wow, I feel better about my life. Yes. But to get what you're talking about – I think it really requires the gospel. I think, yes. I think Jesus has to be a part of that. And so it's, so that was an element. You kind of found Christ not just to be pointing his finger at you and saying, like, do better and try harder. Yes. But yes. it was like inviting you to come in to yes. you know, be known. And, and Yes. To, yes. Uh, yeah, I, I love that. And so that that's now really integrated into not only your practice and the people you're ministering and helping, but I imagine it's the very fabric of your life. Like, I'm alive and I'm... Uh, this, this is, I'm here for my wife in a different way than I would have been. I'm here for my kids yes. in a different way. Can you yeah. tell me a little bit about that? What, what does that look like? Well, I certainly hope that's true. Okay. Um, and, uh, um, we'll, we'll call her real quick right now. <laughs> that's, the phone, right. Just, <laughs> that's right. 
you do a 19-year check-in. But, <laughs> you know, I've, I've set as my North Star, like, I do want to keep the hearts of my family alive. Um, so how I relate with them, how I love them, um, making sure my, my kids know um, when I've failed them, you know, so they know dad apologizes mm -hmm. for his stuff and that we can have a conversation about how it impacted them. So I try mm -hmm. to leave room for not just what I did wrong and what I need to do right with them, but also how their heart felt mm -hmm. in response to me. Um, I try to do that with my wife, you know, uh, owning my impact on her. Yeah. Um, but my, my goal has been, I want kids with alive hearts yeah. and obviously it involves, you know, uh, introducing them to Jesus, you know, to give them a new heart, to set them alive yeah. in that sense. Um, and, and so to honor desire as well with them. Yeah. Yeah. So you, yeah, you, uh, you're hit on a good spot there. You introduce them to Jesus is like, the, it's the new life. It opens up a new door, but you know, as well as I do, a lot of people that have honestly and sincerely and deeply met Christ are still facing some issues, and some people don't really want to deal with them. When, yes. when we do these, uh, we do a lot of pastors' conferences around the world, and um, a lot of times I'll have a, you know, and I love the teaching part of it, but a pastor will come up afterwards, and that's my favorite part because he, he wants to talk or she wants to talk, and, and that's where they'll say, man, you know, my church is going well, everybody tells me I preach well, but... Uh, you know, I'm really an angry man. I'm angry at my family. I, I snap at my kids. I don't even want to be around my wife. I want to go to work. You know, I'm competent at work, but I'm failing at home or I'm failing in my key relationships. But they don't really want to, you know, and they might be 30, 40, 50 years old or older and have never taken the time to really look at that. Do you find that in, in church circles that, <clears throat> of course, it might be different for you because you're, you know, people are coming to you like sure. acknowledging they need help. But I know you probably go to church too. Yeah, do, do you find grew up in the church? Okay, yeah. yeah. Do you find that people are have a hesitancy to take a deeper look inside their own heart? Yes, yes. You know, I think um, the what the gospel gave us most is this opportunity to be curious about our behavior. Wow, I love that word, curious. And um, you know, to ask the questions of why am I angry, not just to stop being angry, mm -hmm. but to be curious about our behavior. And I think that's the the gift of the gospel most. Yeah. I think that's what Jesus did with people. You know, the woman at the well, um, there's a curiosity about desire, not simply a, a demand for, you know, to conform to something, yeah. a moral um, standard of some sort. Yeah. Um, I, I think that, you know, as a church... We haven't done well at um, confronting shame. Yeah. And I think, you know, often it's shame that keeps us bound to certain behaviors or attempts at trying to just um, change your behavior and not ask the curious questions of, gosh, what is going on mm -hmm. uh, behind my uh, behavior yeah. to get to the desire? That's uh, profound. I love that. It's the shame that keeps people that we're talking about here today, yes. keeps them from wanting to look into those areas uh, to be curious because they're so used to whenever I look at that, I, it just fills me with more guilt and shame and condemnation because I'm not living up to that yes. standard. That And so how do you, how do you introduce somebody to, to that transition? Okay, okay. Don't look at, don't look at your wounds and your hurts through the lens of shame, but look at it through the lens of curiosity. Is there something yeah. you can do to help us? To, well, I like to say, you know, it's desire that gets us in trouble and it's desire that gets us out of trouble. <laughs> I love that. So um, to always be curious about desire, what did you want? You know, uh, I try to do that even with my kids. What did you want when you hit your brother? Hmm. You know, in, in other words, you need to apologize for what you did. Yeah. But also, what did you want? What, you, what were you trying to accomplish with that? What does it serve you? Um, even, you know, deep um, entrenched addiction is never just habit. Um, there's always desire driving it. So to always get curious about desire in the room, mm. um, I think, is the best way out of shame. What do I want? Um, you know, Jesus with the, uh, the man at the pool of Bethesda, right? right? Uh, you know, he asked, he stopped to ask the man, what do you Ooh. want? Wow. Right? He's always trying to get to people's desire. Yeah. <clears throat> so I think the best way out of shame is to ask um, questions about desire. What is it you think we really want? Oh wow, that, that's a big question. Is that, um, is that too broad a uh, question? Is that too broad. I mean, I, I may not have. Like when somebody comes to you, oh, let's take your son for instance, if you don't mind us using him as an example, yeah. which I know it's always yeah. dangerous to talk about our own family, especially sure. you know me from the pulpit. My kids always like, oh, dad, stop talking about me. <laughs> but anyway, just uh, we won't let them watch this episode. But your one of your sons hits the other, and you ask him, 
what what does he really want? Do you kind of already know what he wants, or is it different for every person? You know, I I always stay curious about okay. it specifically, yeah. and it can be a lot of things. Obviously, we could say, you know, it'd be easy to collapse that down to, well, we want God. Yeah. We want, <clears throat> and ultimately, I think it all comes from God, right? And it all points us to God. So, sure. But at some level, that's not a helpful answer. Yeah. Well, you want God. Okay. Yeah. Now what? Right. right. So to get really specific matters, what did you want in this moment? So what did you want? Speaking of the the example you gave of the 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 pastor who mm-hmm. gets angry and struggles to want to go home after work, right. um, to ask the question of what did you what do you want by staying away from home? Or what do you want to be different at home? To get specific always matters. So with my son, what did you want in this moment? Okay, you wanted him to hear you. Okay. Oh, gotcha. okay. Yeah. And what did you want him to hear you about? So it matters to get specific because yeah. it's it's um, we live in a story. Yeah. And so. Wow. I want to get to that in just a minute about story because I know that's a big part of your work you do. Going back to your son there. So, so he's saying, I want to be heard. It, it, it probably goes, I mean, you've been around this enough to know your curiosity would be like, okay, you want to be heard because you want to be acknowledged, accepted, loved. Yes. You know? yes. And so so there's some really deep issues in his, in your son's heart or this pastor's heart <clears throat> that we're talking about that's angry. He wants to be respected. He wants to, he wants to be honored. Maybe as a child he was, you know, had a, a parent who was uh, emotionally unavailable to him. And so he's trying to get people to, you know, so there's always something in power. Uh, there's a power behind the sin yes. that's causing us to, to do that. And yes. So, and so, I believe Jesus wants to has, wants to sit with those questions with us. Hmm. I think that's the gift of the gospel. It's scandalous even to think, right? Yeah. yeah. That the grace is that, um, that the grace is that yeah. good <laughs> um, and, and free um, yeah. that we could actually be curious about our own sin and have a conversation with God that invites us back yeah. to dignity. It's so attractive when you say that. It just attracts my heart to want to bring my sin, my pain, my wounds to, to Jesus rather than the shame pulling me away from him because the the, the the religious part of it is like he's going to be mad at me. He's going to be – but but the healthy part of the gospel yes. is he wants you to sit with that and to talk to him about it and to learn what it, what it yes. is. You know, and and yes. I, I've, would you agree with this? I've kind of been looking at this lately and I haven't really talked to too many people about it, but like when somebody's – uh, let's take a uh, let's take a, a you know a, a woman who's uh, she's in a marriage that's it's a cold marriage it's not going well uh, and she gets attracted to a, another guy mm-hmm. uh, you know that moralistically be like oh that's sin you're you know you're you're mm-hmm. lusting and you're but I've been looking at it lately through a, little, through a little different lens like there's something in her heart that longs for intimacy that longs mm-hmm. for, so there's there's something I can't mm-hmm. call it good right but. There's mm-hmm. some there's something about her heart that longs for more, mm-hmm. even though she might have found it in the wrong place. And so mm-hmm. that to me that's exactly what you're saying. It's like, it's mm-hmm. putting it in don't don't put her problem in in the shame category. Like oh how you know how horrible a person you are yes. to be you know what the Bible says don't you know look at that you know and so right. so so you're you're talking about inviting them to see where that comes from what's yes. in their heart. Right to understand that all human behavior is complex, and so it's never just sin. Yeah. So if, if what you said is, well, that's just sin, right? Mm-hmm. You'd be shutting something down inside of her, yeah. right? And we could say at some level, okay, if she follows through or is a portion of that lustful, sure. Yeah. Um, but to say, is it all lustful? Is that all she's doing? No, right? To yeah. say that there's something of her desire um, that's present and that God wants to bring honor to and dignity yeah. to. Yeah. And then you become more in touch too. You're you're saying, oh, okay, this, this longing in my heart is not evil in itself. It might be the way I'm approaching it, but I'm not an evil person yes. by having this pull in my heart. It's just uh, to recognize, maybe even give honor to the fact that I was built for connection with people. I was built for intimacy, but I have to keep it within the boundaries that God's yes. given us and, and and he can help us do that. But it's grace, not uh, power. Tell yes. me a little bit more about uh, about story. You know, a lot of your work has to do around story. And I know you, you mentioned just before when we met earlier, uh, you've been to, the, uh, Dan Allen has been on our program a couple times and I know you, you've done some of the uh, training in, in his his educational system his school uh, and a lot of you, you guys have done a lot in the, like a narrative you're calling it uh, mm-hmm. can you explain a little bit about what that is 
Yeah, so it'd be um, narrative focused trauma care. Okay. Um, it's it's a it's a way to enter into our pain. How do we engage our pain? Our pain is storied, um, meaning stories are how we make meaning of okay. virtually everything in our life. So if I asked you about your weekend, and we got past, it was good or it was bad, <laughs> yeah. right? I said, well, what was good, right? Do you see how? Two questions in, now yeah. we're into stories. You would say, yeah. well, we went here and did this, or we went to this movie, uh-huh. or it was bad because my car broke down. And um, the story that unfolded with uh, the tow truck driver, mm-hmm. right? In other words, <clears throat> anything of meaning in our life, uh, we hold that meaning with stories. If, you know, To okay. tell you about my marriage would be to tell you stories. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Yeah. So you don't just, it's not just dates and facts and figures. It's, 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 it has to do with emotions as well. And yes, uh, you're, you're, again, going back to the things you've been talking about here this morning, the, your heart, yes, your, your story talks about, you, you know, so, so if you were to ask me what I did this weekend, I'd tell you about, we were on vacation. I saw the Arches National, uh, you know, that, that, that park. And I, I was in tears. I mean, I just, mm. it's just, it was just like so beautiful. I was shocked. So that's the story of that. I was there and I did this thing, but it was also right. something. And sometimes we right. like tell the story. Sometimes we just tell our stories like, what'd you do? Well, uh, I went to the 830 showing of Batman, you know, and, but not like, right. I was, you know, something, there's something deeper about it. like I, what I got out of that was justice. You know what I mean? Right. And so like to even ask the question of like, what were your tears for? Okay. Yeah. Right. Like, do you like yeah. you 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 went to arches is right. a story, but yeah. like, what were the tears wow. for? Like, what did they mean for you? Now you're going deeper than I thought. We're, <laughs> that's powerful. Yeah. So so a lot of your therapy then is, like, people tell you part of their story. So they come to you yes. probably because they have a story. Uh, I'm depressed. I'm drinking too much. I'm. Uh, so that's that's their surface. They're presenting problems, so to yes. speak. And then so you really just. How do you do that? How do you start engaging them, getting them engaged in their own story? You know, it's it's not uh, at one level. It's not rock and science. Stay okay. curious. In other words, okay. um, to borrow from Dan Allender, he's yeah. he, um, he said at one time, you know, it's rare for people to ask more than one or two questions yeah, right. deep into a conversation. Absolutely. And so sometimes therapy is simply just asking the third or fourth or fifth question. Wow. Just staying curious enough to keep drawing somebody deeper into their heart. Yeah. So you know, asking about your tears, right? Mm. Like. Um, that was two, three questions in yeah. to a conversation, right? And do you hear how quickly we're near to your heart? Yeah. Um, as you said, like, whoa, we're getting deeper. Yeah. So some, you know, part of counseling <laughs> is just um, staying curious. And yeah. um, a lot of times paying attention to when I feel bored yeah. um, to notice, like, um, when I'm sitting with somebody, often when I feel bored is, is when they've checked out of something of their story. And so I, I oftentimes I'll pay attention to, Gosh, what, you know, it could be me, could be something in me that got distracted or checked out. So sometimes I'm checking with myself um, every time I'm checking with myself. But um, trying to connect with, you know, God doesn't make boring people. No one is boring Um, by design. We're all the the glorious images of God. So when you're bored with somebody, to ask the question of where did we go? Where did their heart go? Why isn't it here? What happened? What does that do for the person that's starting to tell their story? Um, does something start happening in their yeah, life? Well, again, we we tell stories um, from what we see inside of our brain. So you don't you don't see right like words going no, across right. a page in your in your head. What you see is is uh, visual, um, you know, video like uh, pictures of your life. Yeah. And so when people start to tell their story, they start to get embodied. Um, uh, usually, and uh, unless something has happened to make them check out of something, okay, right? But when you tell your story, people start to experience, um, re-experience what happened to them mm-hmm. and relive it. And that opens up um, those events for healing. Um, so uh, they've done some research on, you know, memory and the brain. And what they've discovered is that when you tell somebody something, that memory actually gets opened up and re-experienced. So however mm-hmm. it goes when you tell that story mm. um, actually changes the feeling of the story. So if you wow. tell somebody, um, you know, a harmful story of when your father was drunk and um, hit you, um, again, probably to re-experience that would be a lot yeah. uh, going on in your body, your heart, um, the pain of that. 
if somebody is kind to you while you're telling that story, it actually changes the feeling and meaning of that story. Mm. Right? So the facts don't change. <clears throat> right. Right? But the, the meaning for your heart has now changed. So the next time you remember that story or tell somebody that story, it kind of changes the memory a little bit? Yes. Okay. In, in other words, you're, uh, you will have an association of the previous person's kindness Okay. if they were kind to it's you. It's kind of integrated into the story now. Is yes. Like, as I tell the story, it's... So, and, and in my mind, when you say that, my mind goes to, okay, if you're going to be kind to me when I'm telling my painful story, then maybe I could be a little bit kind to myself as well. Yes. And not tell that through the lens of my dad hit me because I was such a terrible kid or I kept failing him. And, that's uh, right. So, so it starts, starts – so that's part of the healing process of the story. Yes. With, with somebody like you or a, a caring friend. Yes. Hearing that story through through the lens of curiosity, number one. The fact the fact that somebody curious about your life is yeah. phenomenal. I mean, that's I I would say it's probably when I was younger, the deepest desire of my heart was to be successful. I wanted to start to be a successful minister. Now it's to 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 have conversations where there's several people that are curious about each other, and mm-hmm. you know, you don't like say like. Uh, I went to Arches this weekend. It's like, oh, yeah, well, I went to the movies. Like, you know, where you yes. stop and actually address what that other person said. And like you said, ask two of your questions. I find that very rare. I find it, it extremely rare, rare to, to, you know, you may have it in the circles that you uh, travel in, but I, uh, and I have some of that. But just, you know, to, to sit at a table and maybe you know, have dinner with some friends and it just be the event. I did this or we went there yeah. and without – going to those two or three questions. Well, how did you feel about that time? Or why, why when you, when you said you went to that movie, you kind of looked like, you know, you were mad at something. And I was like, yeah. is, you know, it's kind of, it's uh, a, yeah. so I love what you're doing because it, I, th- I have a feeling that when you open up somebody else's heart, like your heart was opened up, then they're going to kind of start doing that. They're going to go like, say, say you're talking yes. to a husband, he's going to go home and start opening up his wife's heart and his yes. kid's heart. I think that's phenomenal. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I think listening is an act of generosity um, mm. because it is so rare, right? We, yeah. we, we're used to, and um, this is awful to know, but we're used to people just talking at each other, yeah. right? Like, oh, what did you do? Oh, I did this. Oh, and I did this. Yeah. Right. And oh, well, Good. It's I don't know. Like, it's, yeah, where do you go yeah, from there? Right. Yeah. We didn't really enter into each other's stories much. Yeah. Uh, and, uh. But, um, you know, if I, I find that when people go through healing experiences like counseling um, or other healing communities, you know, they tend to become pretty generous and they become mm. more curious because yeah. they realize, like, there's a whole other layer of interaction we can get to. Wow. Beautiful. Uh, uh, I wanted to ask you about um, the, how I was introduced to you and the work you do uh, was through uh, a podcast you did with Adam Young. Mm-hmm. And he was asking about a story that you wrote. Uh, I found out it was from 1916. 1916. <laughs> it was a long <laughs> time ago. Really, You're right. a really old guy. <laughs> right. uh, tw- 2016. Uh, that, and so you probably still remember it, but because yeah. you've probably been asked about it more than once. Yeah. Um, so, so the title of it is You Need More Than God, a very... Um, Challenging, so to speak, yes. uh, title. T- tell scandalous. Me, scandalous is the word uh, that's that's perfect for it. Uh, when I first heard you started to talk to Adam Young about it, I was almost like, I don't know if I'll watch this, you know, listen to this episode because it's like I don't really want to hear anybody talk about, you know. Uh, I think I heard like God's not enough when I first yeah. heard, heard the title. But man, you just opened my eyes to something really mm-hmm. brilliant. Uh, can you t- take some time to describe uh, what? what you wrote and what it was doing in your own heart when, yeah. when you were going through this? Yeah. Um, well, you know, the, the idea would be scandalous if it didn't come from God. Yeah. Um, and I was thinking of that place in Genesis and trying to imagine what that moment would have been like in Genesis 2 where <clears throat> Adam walked with God and Eve had not yet been created. And they were walking and God said, it's not good for man to be alone. And so I was trying to imagine in that mm-hmm. piece I wrote, what what would that conversation have sounded like between yeah. the two of them? Um, and that, I mean, that's scandalous for something in Eden to be called not good, yeah. right? It, I mean, it was this crescendo of goods, right? It's good, it's good, it's good, it's very good. Yeah. Um, and now God's saying something's not, not good, good. Yeah. right? And what wasn't good was Adam being alone. And yet, you know, think about that. Like Adam in sinless Eden 
with no wounds, no story, mm. nothing to prevent him from having connection with God. He had constant conversation with God, as I imagine. Mm-hmm. And um, and yet he was lonely. Mm. What? Yeah. That doesn't make sense, right? right? Like we all imagine like, well, goodness, if I was just close with God, yeah. I would always feel connected and alive. And yet here God is saying Adam was lonely. Um, so it, it, it gave me permission to just recognize my desire for human connection. You know, lots of things, right? Food, sleep, water, mm-hmm. um, those, the basic things of life. Um, but also just connection and love and, um, you know, you, even the pleasure in, in places and things and food and, the pleasures of those things, yeah, like to, to understand that God made us to to crave these things, yeah. um, and that actually, when we honor those desires, is when we um, honoring those desires can actually create a greater gratitude to mm-hmm. God. Um, mm. And I, I was recognizing, I was thinking of, you know, back when I was entering into counseling, there was this profound moment I had where I was in the middle of um, just struggling with depression and being in college and um, just some of my own journey with my own pain at the time. And I went on this walk and um, it was a walk that I was praying and my prayer turned to uh, a lot of anger with God, um, just frustrated with him. And I I let my heart kind of let him have some of this, this anger. um, Mm. And, as I got angry with God and railed at him, my my anger turned to tears. Mm. Uh, I started to weep. And what I longed for most was, I just want you to hold me. <laughs> like, I just want you to hug me. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, at this stage in the story um, of the world and the universe, that's, that's not something God offers. Right. Um, you know, I believe one day we'll hug God, mm. hug Jesus bodily, wow. that's right? Beautiful, Physical. Yeah. Hug. I look forward to that. Yeah. Um, that that the wiping away of tears is literal, yeah. right? Yeah. Not not simply like a metaphor. Wow, yeah, um, he's actually touching your cheeks. Yeah, yeah. and I mean, yeah. I mm-hmm. long for that day. Yeah, um, but you're talking about the hug of God. Is you're not talking about it in the emotional sense, like I feel His presence surrounding right. me. You're talking about it. You but I wanted a arms. hug. Yeah. I wanted an actual hug, yeah. right, from God, and yeah. it, it at He didn't offer that yeah. in the moment, but. Um, I was aware right after that I started going to counseling um, and my therapist did um, offer hugs to me mm. as a, as a parting gesture um, and just noticing like the gift of human connection. Yeah. Right. And is it to say, well, God wasn't enough? No, I believe God led me to this man, but mm. is it also to say I needed uh, more than God? Well, in a way, Right, like God yeah. saying, it's not good for you to be alone. Yeah. Right, and I could feel that, like in this, you know, my version of Adam walking with God. I was walking on this walk and felt that desire for human connection. Yeah. Wow. And then he, then he gives it to him. He has Eve comes along, and he's uh, God seems to be not no, no longer saying it's not good. It's like it's it, it's it solved the, what solved the problem was not another intimate moment with God. Yes. What solved the problem was a physical person <clears throat> who could hug and, and yeah. kiss and touch and and speak to uh, in you know yes. verbal. I don't know if I don't know if God was speaking verbally uh, to Adam before that or not. But yeah, it's, it's, so so this is so I love this because it's you're really talking here about the need for the body of Christ. You need uh, yes. that, that you know, and I, I think that where where it's scandalous is if is if you're saying you know God's not enough. That's right. one thing, but you're saying you need more than God, which I think you phrased that so well hmm. to be able to say, mm-hmm. okay, God is enough in himself. Yes. He's enough to see that you're alone and needs to bring people to you yes. to give you that hug, to give you that presence. Yeah, I heard it said somewhere, and I can't remember who said it, but that it's it's actually the humility of God to let us need more than him. Yeah, um, it's, not, it's not his inadequacy, right? But it's his humility yeah. to create a world that, that uh, requires us to need other things than him. Yeah, that's yeah, that's uh, shows his confidence in himself. You know, his yes, his, 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 his no problem with self worth. Uh, <laughs> that's you know, right. Um, I was reading last night, and this the, the author said, uh, 
we are biologically wired for relationships. Mm -hmm. I thought that was kind of a cool way of saying it. Mm -hmm. So, I, so I, and, and I knew I was going to be interviewing you today. So I, I was thinking of this article mm -hmm. and then a, that word biologically wired. Yeah, it's kind of cool because when <clears throat> when God came to Adam, if he, I don't know if he, if Adam heard him say that, it's not good that you're alone. It sounds sounds like he he would have heard that. Yeah, that but God knew that he had wired from the time he formed Adam in the clay. Yes, he wired him to be connected to somebody else. Right. But but didn't provide it right away. Right. And then but what he basically is saying right. you're 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 not wired to do this by yourself. Like right. and so let me bring others to you. And and that's an interesting moment, right? Like yeah. obviously it wasn't God suddenly realizing no. Oh my goodness, I made a mistake. Right. right? It was something of like yeah. drawing Adam into knowing his own desires yeah. again, like letting Adam recognize I'm lonely. Yeah. Um, and I want a human yeah. connection in that. Um, just the blessing yeah. of that from God. It is, yeah. To, and to yeah. you know, to be without something for a while always makes you cherish. You know, when you receive it, is yeah. a, 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 what's that proverb? Uh, a, a desire, or something makes makes your heart sick. Uh, oh yeah, a longing. Uh, 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 I can't remember. Hope that. deferred. Hope makes deferred. Yeah, one so, heart sick. A longing fulfilled is a tree of life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you, so in a sense, his heart is sick, and God's almost allowing a little bit of that, which yes. could speak to what you do in your therapy. Is the story? It's like, well, why? You know, because I'm sure you hear a lot of why questions. Why did he allow this to happen and stuff? And you know, yeah. some of that could be this. It could be the fact that 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 heart sickness shows the. Yes. Once once you get the heart alive again, it, it yeah. brings great joy. You know, I I I um I don't believe God sets up our pain to teach us lessons. Good. You know, yeah, like I, yeah. I don't see trauma as well. You know, I guess God wanted to teach you something. I think that's sometimes what people are told. Yeah. Um, and gosh, that that feels like a a, a spiritual. Uh, a spiritual violation, mm. honestly, in a lot of ways, because Thank it makes us that. have to accept it as well. God wants to teach me something, yeah. you know, and how could you say that of, you know, sexual abuse or right. uh, uh, an affair, divorce or, you know, uh, you know yeah. um, other harm, neglect. Um, I, I don't think God sets up that to teach us things, but I do think he wants to have a conversation with us about our desire mm -hmm. so that he meets us in there, right? As it said of Joseph, you know, uh, what was meant for evil, God has made for good. Yeah. So is it that God did the evil to cause the good? No. Right. Right. God forbid. Yeah. Um, yeah. But um, it's really important you said that because those people are listening to us, you know, that if they don't hear what you just said, they're that could go back to shame, right? Like, yes. Uh, I, I brought this on myself because I wasn't doing good enough, so God had to punish me. Right. Know, right. Just, like I couldn't learn it any other way, and I want to yeah. say absolutely not. That yeah. is not good what I you. sense God to be wow. the author yeah. of. He doesn't wow. author evil yeah. yet. Will He show up to have the conversations about your heart with you? Wow. Yes. Yeah. I believe He wants that. Yeah. Mm. Good. Well, this this article is uh, on your website, Sam Jolman. Yes. Dot com or dot Sam org? Jolman dot com. S A M J O L M A. Okay. And um, in, your, in our next episode, you're going to join us again. Uh, we're going to talk about a book you wrote. Um, Great. But this one will have people go to your website and download this article. And you have several other articles because besides your therapeutic work, you're a writer as well. That's right. Very, very good writer. Uh, Thank you. I like your articles. Um, I want to encourage people to go samjolman.com and learn that. So, Sam, thanks for being with us. And we look forward to Thank having you. you on our next episode. That sounds great. Looking forward to it. Each week, this podcast reaches thousands of listeners. This critical work is made possible by the generous contributions of individuals like you who believe in World Challenge's mission. Thank you for listening and supporting World Challenge, transforming lives through the message and mission of Jesus Christ.